So it still seems that I get posts under my intercooler draining videos uh, about the stupidity or the reasoning behind dr drilling a hole in the cooler while it's mounted in the car. People seem to freak out that you're not supposed to drill a plastic intercooler. It'll cause debris of go to go in and get into the engine, the turbo, blah blah blah. And my comeback to all of this has always been that I'd rather drill a hole and drain the oil than not do anything and then take a pot, take the chance of blowing an engine. Again, it has happened to me. Uh, an ALH intercooler had oil in here and under high boost after cleaning the intake manifold that oil got pushed up into the intake and it then got burnt uh, because oil burns, it's a combustible material. The engine ran away and uh, maximum RPM got exceeded, lots of smoke out the tailpipe and the engine blew, number four connecting rod went through the block. Uh, so it wasn't a very pretty sight um, and again ever since then I'm, I just drill a small hole an eighth of an inch and um, that's how I deal with this stuff and uh, this is one of the screws that I took out it, it was in the vehicle in the cooler for uh, maybe at least a couple of years and you can see the outside of the screw gets rusty obviously because of weather conditions but the inside here threads are completely nice and clean there is no worry of the threads rusting out and then the tip breaking off and then it, it getting sucked into the engine. It just doesn't happen. And, the, and for it to go reach up, go through the intercooler, through the piping and then into the engine, that's again, that's a, not a very likely likelihood. So anyways, I'm trying to make this video uncut so that you guys cannot question or dispute anything that goes on here. I even have a camera here. I'm going to take pictures of the intake right here so that you can see before and after drilling. Oops, I think that was a good picture. Let's double check. Uh, that's close enough. And then the outlet. Take a picture of that. So I'm going to drill an eighth of an inch hole here for the screw and then I'm going to put the screw in. I'm going to drill a hole over here for this leak down tester. I already checked on a piece of plastic what size drill I need so I have my drill right here. And it doesn't really matter where I'm going to drill it just as long as I have good access. But I think right around here maybe a nice flat surface would be ideal. Let's see. Well, might work anywhere. Let's just pick a spot. Hopefully it'll seal. It's a junk cooler anyways, in terms of I'm never going to use it again. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so this size hole you would never drill in your cooler, and uh, even that one, I don't see any shavings in here. Take a picture so you guys can see. And you can zoom in as much as you want. So this will be my leak down tester hole. Over here, I'm going to drill a hole. That's in a similar location as in the ELHs. I always pick the low spot. So let's go around here. This hump is in the way, so I'm just gonna go right here. I'm gonna also put some oil in this thing later. Okay, same thing. In terms of debris, there might be one shaving here. It's stuck to the side. Another picture for you guys to dispute. I'm going to put the little screw in. 
I need a Phillips. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for the Phillips. Still the same shot, nothing has changed. I'm going to put the little screw in as you can see. And it threads in fairly stiff and tight because I picked the right drill bit. You want to pick a small drill bit so that the screw does its cutting. Cuts in, you can see it here. There is the screw, what it looks like with the hose off. Another picture for you skeptics. Might be out of focus. You can find all my pictures on Instagram as well. And then what I did, or I'm going to do, is put these covers on. Because I obviously need to be able to block the air somehow. I apologize if the camera doesn't tilt down far enough. Uh, I'm just trying to do the best I can here for all the haters. It should hopefully seal in enough PSI as if it were a running engine. And I'm going to obviously check this at various PSI levels because I can dial this thing in up to a hundred. I should have no issues checking the maximum that these guys can take or the cooler for that matter. Okay so this is all nice and tight. I'm going to put in oil after because again right now we're just checking to see what kind of seal this thing has for air. Thread this guy in now. Oops. Have to create some threads first. Now, I'm not worried about these shavings. Again, this is not the kind of stuff that you would do on your cooler. Yes, because of the threading here. The taper, the tap, you will have a little bit of shavings going in. That's not going to happen on your cooler when you drill it with an eighth, eighth of an inch drill like this. There's no need to tap it because the screw does it for you. I don't see it. I don't even think anything fell out. In goes the leak down hose. Crooked, can't tell. Just double checking the threads here. Should go in just as easy because it's the same size. Feels a little stiffer. So I'm gonna use some pliers here to help out. Snug fit is obviously good in this case because uh, it'll prevent some air from leaking. There's a little o-ring that's going to push up against it as well, which is going to hopefully help. I'm gonna, not going to go too tight, otherwise it's going to strip on me. Okay, there we go. As an added benefit here, we can put a little bit of windshield washer or windshield cleaner, window cleaner. Let's crank this puppy up. Oh, we're 
going to go to 5 PSI. 5 PSI is moving up. 5 is holding steady. 5 is holding steady. I don't hear any leaks. I don't see any leaks. Let's go to 10. This is PSI. There might be some bubbles. Yes, there are some bubbles here. Somebody was asking me if this could create a boost leak. Well, I'm looking at, oh, it's a needle went actually up to, it's almost reading 50 in here, 13 on this side. So this is negligible. I mean, you cannot even see this in terms of hearing it, seeing it obviously with, um, with the bubbles forming. And you hear it a little bit here, but again, this side you wouldn't worry about. Would this be something that I would be concerned about in terms of boost leak? No way. Uh, the, computers can't, the computer can't measure that. Let's go up to 20 and see what happens. You can see the bulging here. 20 PSI. Let's watch the rate of increase in bubbles. Yes, it's bubbling a little bit quicker. More PSI, more bubbling. We're actually creeping up to uh, 25 PSI. Again, this is nothing that I would be worried about or consider a leak. Twenty five PSI. I would still not be con concerned about this. Some more Instagram pictures. Okay, I think we better put some oil in it and then we're going to see if oil comes out. I'm going to hold the oil, uh, the intercooler in a position where, uh, similar to in a car, that the oil collects at the bottom and see if the drain plug leaks. And then we're going to crank this sucker up to see how many PSI it can hold. It's draining down right now. Gonna take this cap off and then put oil in it. The screw I'm not gonna touch. So again, screws in here. I'm going to leave it in an upright position like this. This is some oil that I drained out of it. That I drained out of an intercooler. This one wasn't too bad during oil changes, 8,000 kilometers. This isn't bad at all. Uh, that's not even a quarter of a cup. If my math is right, 250 milliliters, that's not even that much. So here in she goes. Gonna add some more just to make people happy. Shake it up a little bit. Now you can see the oil right in here, and this is what usually what what it would look like. Obviously, in the car, the oil settles at the bottom. Okay. 
the screw is covered in oil. Put the cover back on. Now the only thing that I'm worried about is that when it does blow, because of too many PSI, um, that I'm going to get oil everywhere. So I'm only going to go to maybe 20 and we'll check the uh, maximum pressure that the screw can hold with the oil out of the system. Hopefully you guys are still watching. I know this is boring, but that's the only way I can uh, prove that my oil draining um, suggestion is of a valid one. So again, here's the cooler in its upright position. Those of you who are familiar with the ALH uh, or any 1.8 turbos, they usually sit in the upright position. So the oil is sitting down here right now. And again, at, under high boost, it would, go, would be carried up through the cooler into the intake. Now, this, this one here does not have a, um, uh, what's it called? It's almost like a splash guard. The AL, ALH cooler is actually a little bit thicker on the bottom and just under here there's actually a metal plate so that when the oil does get pushed Volkswagen actually knows that this can happen right so when oil gets in here uh, and it collects it collects in this little pocket and uh, so the air rushes in it hits the pocket the oil gets pushed over the air then comes around and goes up over that lip into the cooler uh, but again, if there's too much oil, there's nothing that they can do or um, or you can do aside from draining the cooler on a regular basis. Once there's too much air, too much flow, uh, that oil will get sucked up as well or pushed up under boost. So anyways, oil is in. We're going to hold it so that the drain plug is right here. I'm going to crank it up again. And hopefully this is not going to make a huge mess. If it does, I hope this video goes viral. So we're at about 10, 15 PSI right now. Let's see if we see anything yet. I don't see any air bubbles. It could very well be that the oil is sealing it right now because the oil is thicker. Thicker than the air that's trying to get out. You can see the bulging on the caps so there's definitely pressure in here again am I concerned about boost leak because of this screw not at all we're at about 15 psi let's go to 20 20 psi it's creeping up a bit more actually shooting this in my good clothes on the weekend so hopefully I don't get splashed with oil still no visible oil anywhere on the screw the caps are bulging we're at 20 the outlet says 25 psi the inlet just about under so there's obviously a bit of discrepancy between the gauges this isn't high-tech digital stuff it's all analog so there you go Proof that uh, drilling your cooler, A, is a good idea, and B, that it doesn't affect boost, which people are concerned about. I've got 25 PSI right now. I'm going to drain the oil out. We're still going to do this um, non-stop, no editing here, just so people can't dispute it. Might be a boring video to some, others might get a kick out of it or appreciate it I sh should say I'm not a very talkative person so this is a little bit much for me I've got to be careful this is the only cap I have uh, that fits on here nice and snug if I bust it that's going to be the end of it. Out comes the oil that I put in.
the reason it's so clumpy coming out right now is because some of the oil is coming out from the galleries here and that's splashing on the inside and then bouncing out it's not plastic pieces or anything like that Let me take a picture of that so you know what I mean. You can see the oiliness of the uh, of the actual runners that go up through the cooler. You can see how oily they are. That's because when I had it in this posi position, oil went into them. And then as I'm draining this thing now, that oil is running down and dripping out of those galleries. So obviously as you can see there's quite a bit more oil than I would usually get out during a regular oil change. Uh, the key is to, to drain this thing on a regular basis, that way you're ahead of the game, you never allow excess amount of oil to collect. And by my count I've done this maybe a couple of hundred times already, drilling coolers. I've seen coolers come back, or customers, we have a steady clientele, they come back and I keep draining them on a regular basis. Coolers that do not have a drain screw in it or a drain plug such as this, I, I drill them. I've got videos on my YouTube channel that shows me drilling them. And I have never had an issue with any of the cars that I have done this on. Some might say, well, there is always a first time. That might be right, but you tell me at this point, do you see anything, anything at all that could cause adverse issues? Uh, if you can prove it to me, I'll gladly stop doing this. Uh, but I would rather save a customer an engine from blowing up, which will cost $2,000 or more. Obviously, if you get a used engine from the junkyard, it might be cheaper, but uh, saving a customer an engine blow up, I think that's well worth doing. And that's a service I don't mind providing. And just think about how many Jiffy Lubes there are that do oil changes that have no idea about this oil collecting, possibly blowing up an engine. Um, so, as a customer, I would think that if a technician did this service for me, draining the cooler, that, hey, this guy knows what he's doing, he's uh, helping me prevent a blow-up, um, let's give this guy some donuts and coffee. Okay, now we're at 20 PSI, we're just going to do this whole thing again, we're going to see what the maximum is that this thing can take. It's already creeping up to 25. Hopefully it's not going to blow in my face. I'm not going to go more than 30. I mean, there's no real reason to. This is all proof of concept anyways. It's just proof that... Uh, proof that the drain plug is not the issue not so much how much pressure it can hold. Picture for Instagram, 30 PSI. There's the drain plug. That's it for me today. Hope you like this video. Share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Am I doing the correct thing and drilling the coolers? A couple of people on Instagram already said, way to go, yes. Well, not in those words, but I've got, another, I've got a subscriber on Instagram. He was surprised of how much oil was in it. So again, um, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Got to go home and edit, edit this now. Well, not edit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it in a raw file. But I'm going to put in the intro, put in the uh, credits on the out, out on the, at the back of the video. But I'm going to upload it as is.
Take care.